Honestly, if the console delivers the promised performance we desperately need for the next four years, 600 is not a lot. I understand if you're 17 to 22 years old and just starting out in life, but as responsible adults with phones in our pockets that cost 700 and up, what is 600? We cannot expect an RTX 4080 GPU in a $500 console. Let's be real. And maybe consider stopping all the subscriptions like Netflix, Amazon, and Game Pass and buy a game once every two months instead. If you do the math, in three years, you'll have a full shelf of games that you actually own. I will expand on this in a future video. I've been watching some back-end action happening on retailer websites, and it sure feels like we're on the verge of an official announcement. And by on the verge, I mean really close, like a refresh your browser kind of close. If you're following this closely, you'll know that Bill Bunn already dropped some serious hints that this console reveal could go down in the first half of September. And retailers, well, they've got those product pages drafted and ready to hit that publish button. That only means one thing. They've probably seen the console already, or at least got enough details to prep for the launch. Now. Here's what I'm hoping. If we get that PS5 Pro announcement soon, it might mean some surprises in AstroBot. Imagine getting an update that sneaks in some PS5 Pro-specific content. And who knows, maybe we'll see a stealth drop that lines up with a mid-September reveal, keeping the buzz alive. But hey, that's just me speculating. What do you think? Drop it in the comments if you're feeling that September vibe or think Sony's holding out until October. Now, everyone and their grandma is sharing what they think the PS5 Pro is going to look like, based on this new image floating around that Bill first put out there. If you've seen it, and Let's be honest, who hasn't at this point? It looks like a PS5 Slim, but with some bold new design cues, like three sleek stripes instead of one. At first glance, this doesn't sound too wild, but there's more to this than meets the eye. The latest word from Bill suggests the three stripes are going to have a metallic, almost reflective finish, adding some extra flair to the already bold PS5 aesthetic. This thing could be a bit taller than the PS5 Slim to fit those stripes in, maybe even a bit beefier for better ventilation, because we all know Sony's not messing around when it comes to keeping these beasts cool. The good news news? If you've got some custom PS5 Slim faceplates, those might still work with the Pro. Makes sense, right? Sony's not looking to print money off of selling a bunch Pro. It's a bit of a gamble, but with all the buzz building up, it could pay off big time. So I had a bit of a shocking revelation about this Concord game. I didn't even know Concord had the LGBTQ tag on Steam. So here's the scoop. It's clear that the developers, Firewalk Studios, are struggling with a game that has not lived up to expectations. In a controversial move, they've removed the LGBTQ tag from the Steam listing, likely in an attempt to distance the game from any political connotations and attract a broader audience. Unfortunately for them, this strategy isn't working, and players are not buying into the game's narrative. The game officially launched at 1 a.m. Eastern Time on August 23, 2024, as announced on X. The early reactions have been far from positive. Around 10 hours after the launch, Steam users noticed that Firewalk Studios had removed the LGBTQ plus and political tags from the game. The developer's decision to remove these tags, presumably to avoid being labeled woke, has sparked backlash. One Steam user pointed out that the removal of these tags might be an attempt to cover up the game's political and social leanings. The game's character designs and inclusion of pronouns have been interpreted by some as pushing a transgender agenda. Another user criticized the developers for their apparent focus on avoiding controversy rather than creating a game that appeals to a wider audience. They suggested that pandering to modern audiences might have backfired, resulting in poor sales. The game's developer controls these tags, which are crucial for determining the game's visibility on Steam. Steam's documentation confirms that developers can indeed control and remove tags, which explains why LGBTQ was removed. This flexibility allows developers to adjust tags based on market reactions, and it seems Firewalk Studios use this feature in response to negative feedback. As of the latest data, there are only 47 concurrent players, with a peak of 697. In summary, the decision to remove the LGBTQ tag appears to be a desperate move by Firewalk Studios to salvage their game's reputation and sales. However, this approach has not prevented the game from becoming a commercial flop. It's a clear example of how a poorly executed strategy can backfire, leaving both the developers and players disappointed. Helldivers 2's creative director has responded to players, agreeing that the shooter has unfortunately become less about a fun, chaotic, challenging, emergent experience, and more about competitiveness. Just recently, a Helldivers 2 subreddit post showed what appeared to be automaton lasers being slowed down by bushes. Yep. 
The local fauna can actually slow down laser beams while they're in midair. Johan Pielestet responded to the video in a lengthy message, thanking the player for their feedback. I 100% agree with tech debt. It is a constant challenge for the engineers, where we have to choose between working on long-standing issues or new features, which is where we fail to deliver new content at the appropriate quality, Pielestet added in the message. The director also wrote that Arrowhead's team is tired from a long development that's been challenging for everyone. Pilostead also explains that with the systematic approach to game design, it now takes longer to onboard new engineers at Arrowhead, but with roughly 200 systems that need to constantly interact with one another in-game. Mistakes happen as some who wrote the original systems are no longer with the studio, meaning nuances can bite us in the behind, the director writes. We are improving this, but as you can see, this combined with the demands on the team from the appreciation that the game has found, as well as our ambition level is straining us, Pilastet explains, adding that Arrowhead needs to do better with its quality assurance process. The key issue that I see is the Delta from launch, where the game was about having a fun, chaotic, challenging emergent experience with like-minded players, has been eroded through a shift in focus to challenge and competitiveness without considering the more playful experience. Helldivers 2's creative director writes, before thanking the player again for their feedback. It's fair to say game is going through a rough patch right now. Players were extremely critical of a patch earlier this month that nerfed fire-based weapons, and comments from Arrowhead's CEO didn't help. Pylstedt also recently admitted that criticism of Helldivers 2 was perfectly valid, which has a lot to do with Arrowhead now actively developing test servers for Helldivers 2 for new features. The next Nintendo Switch will cost $500. That leaves the door open for the console to be pretty expensive. It's no longer anything even close to a secret that Nintendo is hard at work on a successor to the Nintendo Switch. It's mentioned the console multiple times, and now has to clarify that it won't be discussed any time it schedules in a Nintendo Direct livestream. Most of the signs point to a release date in early 2025, but that doesn't mean that other parts of Nintendo's strategy aren't being discussed. In fact, analysts are going haywire trying to figure out and predict what the console currently known as Nintendo Switch 2 will be capable of, and how it'll be priced. One prominent Japanese analyst, Hideki Yasuda of Toyo Securities, has published a report making one clear prediction about the next Switch console, that it'll cost $499 or less, which comes to around $385. That's a pretty interesting number to pick, because it noticeably leaves the door open to Nintendo making its next console a good chunk pricier than the original Switch. This means that we could be looking at a more expensive console than many people will have bargained for, but there's obviously no guarantee that his analysis ends up being spot on. It's true that since the Switch launched many components seem to have become more expensive, as proved by the lack of price cuts for the PS5 or Xbox Series X since their respective launches. Still, Nintendo hasn't raised the Switch's price at any point, and it'll doubtless be very conscious of how much harder it'll be to get people to upgrade to a more expensive console, even if their Switch might be nearly eight years old by by the time a replacement is out. We likely won't find out pricing for the console for a little while yet, but this is interesting food for thought, and potentially a good prod for you to start saving. CD Projekt Red shared an update on The Witcher 4 this week, as part of its latest earnings report covering the first half of 2024. The developer, of course, isn't, isn't calling The Witcher 4 by that name, and is instead referring to it as Polaris, seeing how it's going to encompass a new saga for The Witcher fans to embark on, but regardless of what you call it, we've got an update on it. And according to CD Projekt Red, the new Witcher game is preparing to enter into its next stage of development. It's been in the pre-production phase basically since it was first announced, but now it's moving towards the end of that phase, which means that it'll finally be entering production soon. In the same statement addressing the state of The Witcher 4, Michał Nowakowski, the joint CEO of CD Projekt, also talked about Project Orion, the new cyberpunk game following Cyberpunk 2077 that entered the full production stage earlier this year. Work on Polaris is progressing. Its development team is nearing a major milestone, which will mark the end of the pre-production phase, Nowakowski said. The first half of the year was also a busy period for our Boston studio, which is laying the groundwork for Project Orion, a new game set in the cyberpunk universe. Of course, no release dates have been given for either game since both Polaris and Project Orion are so far away, but it's worth acknowledging that the cyberpunk game is further along now than The Witcher 1, since Polaris is just now prepping to exit pre-production. Piotr Nilubovich, the CFO of CD Projekt, addressed the current state of the new Witcher game 
in a video which echoed the sentiments shared in the press release. A lot happened at our studio in the first half of 2024 on the production front, said Nilubowicz. The Polaris team, working on the next game in the Witcher saga, made substantial progress, which will soon enable us to wrap up pre-production and take this project to the full production phase. Despite the new Witcher game taking on a new saga, and presumably giving us a new protagonist to play as, it was said recently that Geralt of Rivia will still be in the game in some capacity, though it's unclear what his role will look like.